What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our ninth example video following our course on proofwriting. Now, today's example video is going to be on the pigeonhole principle, and then at the end we're gonna do some examples of combinatorial proofs. So let's go ahead and get into this first example. So this first example says, I have seven pairs of socks in my drawer, one of each color of the rainbow. How many socks do I have to draw out in order to guarantee that I've grabbed at least one pair? And then we also wanna see what if there are likewise colored pairs of gloves in there and I cannot tell the difference between gloves and socks and I want a matching set. So let's begin by doing the first scenario. So we can do this example utilizing the pigeonhole principle, which I'll go ahead and read to you now. So the pigeonhole principle is as follows. Suppose n objects are placed in k boxes. If n is greater than k, then at least one box has more than one object. And if n is less than k, then at least one box is empty. So we want to utilize this first scenario where n is greater than k, so that we have at least one box with more object. And in this case, our boxes are going to represent each pair of socks. So we'll have seven boxes, which means we need n to be greater than k. We need to draw one object more than we have pairs of socks. So that means that in order to guarantee that we've grabbed at least one pair, we're going to need to draw out eight socks because the maximum amount of socks we could draw with no pairs would be one of each kind of sock. So for this first part, we will need to draw eight socks to guarantee a pair. Great. Now similarly for this second one, if we have a likewise colored pairs of gloves in there and we can't tell the difference between gloves and socks, how many do we need to draw in order to guarantee that we have a pair? Well, it's similar to the last one. So if we want a pair of matching socks, the maximum number of things we could draw from the drawer would be all of the gloves, which would be 14 total objects, and then one of each sock before we repeat. So there would be 22 total things that would need to be drawn before we could guarantee we would have a pair of socks. And once again, for our first scenario, that would be because we could draw one of each kind of sock before we would draw a duplicate. And for the second example, we would have the ability to draw every single glove and then one of each sock before we would draw a duplicate. And that duplicate would be the 22nd object drawn. Okay, great. So that finishes this problem off. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. Okay, so this problem says there are 21 different time periods during which classes at a college can be scheduled. If there are 532 different classes, what is the minimum number of rooms that will be needed? Well, in order to calculate this, we're just going to divide 532 by 21. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the question is, are we going to take the ceiling or the floor of this number? And we are going to be taking the ceiling because in taking the floor, we are going to be leaving some classes out, which is not acceptable. So we're going to be taking the ceiling here. So if we take the ceiling of 532 over 21, we will get 26. So we will need a minimum of 26 different rooms in order to accommodate all of the classes in this scenario. Great, so let's go ahead and get to the next problem. All right, so this problem says, the queen has a garden in the shape of an equilateral triangle with each side measuring two kilometers. The five royal children like to hide in the garden as far away from each other as possible. Prove that no matter how hard they try to get away from each other, there are always two royal siblings within one kilometer of each other. So let's go ahead and draw this. So we have an equilateral triangle with side length two like so. We can partition this triangle into four similar equilateral triangles where the side length of these equilateral triangles is one. So now we can use the pigeonhole principle to place each of the four children in each of these triangles here. And because there are five royal children and four triangles here, that means one triangle must contain two children. So let me go ahead and write that out. And from these two points of information, we can obviously see that all children will be less than or equal to one kilometer from each other. Great, so that finishes this problem off, so let's go ahead and get into the next one. Okay, so this problem says 10 baseball teams are entered in a round robin tournament, meaning that every team plays each other team exactly once, in which ties are not allowed. Prove that if no team loses all of its games, then some two teams will finish the tournament with the same number of wins. So let's go ahead and look at this. So we have 10 teams, and each of these 10 teams is going to have a number of wins between 1 and 9 because they do not play themselves. So we have 1, 2, 9 wins for all. 
So in order to try and create a scenario where no two teams have the same number of wins, we are going to go ahead and assign each of these 10 teams to a number of wins, one through nine. And in doing so, we can relate this problem to putting objects into boxes. So we are trying to put 10 teams into nine boxes, and if we do that, we are guaranteed to have two things in one box, and in this case, the boxes are the number of wins. So we will be pigeonholing these 10 teams into nine boxes, which proves that at least one box has more than one team. So let me go ahead and write that out. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and get to the next problem. Okay, so this next problem will be a combinatorial proof problem. So we want to use a combinatorial proof to show that n choose 2 times n minus 2 choose k minus 2 is equal to n choose k times k choose 2. Now in general, to give a combinatorial proof for a binomial identity, we'll call, say, this left side A and this right side B here. We want to follow the following roadmap. We want to first find a counting problem, which we can answer in two ways. Next, we want to explain why one answer to the counting problem is A. And then lastly, we want to explain why the other answer to the counting problem is B. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and write up a counting problem for the left and right hand side of these, for the left and right hand side of this identity, and then we'll get into it. So here's the counting problem I came up with. Suppose we have a container of n numbered coins. You must select k coins, putting two in a drawer and the rest in a cup. How many ways can you do this? So we're going to begin by explaining how the left-hand side of our identity is an answer to this problem. So I'll go ahead and write out left-hand side here, and then I'll write out what the left-hand side is for you. So we're going to begin by choosing two coins from the n coins in the container and put them in a drawer. And we can see by definition there will be n choose two ways to do that. Next, we're going to choose k minus 2 of the remaining n minus 2 coins for the cup. And we can see that by definition, we can do that n minus 2 choose k minus 2 ways. So in total, we have n choose 2 times n minus 2 choose k minus 2 ways to do this with this answer. So let's go ahead and give an answer for the right-hand side. So a reminder that our right-hand side is n choose k times k choose 2. So here is our second answer to this counting problem. So we're going to begin by choosing k coins from the n coins in the container. We can see that we can do that n choose k ways. So from here, we're going to choose two of our k selected coins to put in a drawer. And we can see that we can do that k choose two ways. So we can see that no matter which answer we do, we can see out of k selected coins, we will have two in the drawer and the rest in the cup. So that confirms this identity and that finishes this problem off. So let's go ahead and get to the next one. Okay, so this brings us to our second combinatorial proof problem. So we want to show that m plus n choose r is equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to r of m choose k times n choose r minus k. We are going to come up with a counting problem and explain it two different ways and show that the two answers to this counting problem are the left and right hand sides of this identity. Great, so I'll go ahead and write out that counting problem for you now. Okay, so the counting problem we are going to use for this, combinatorial, for this combinatorial proof is how many ways can you choose R coins from a container with M nickels and N dimes? And so from this, it's pretty easy to see that our left-hand side is simply from definition. We are choosing R things from a set of M plus N things. Great. So our right-hand side is a little more complicated as our right-hand side counts cases based on the number of nickels. So if there are, let's say, h nickels, then there will be r minus h dimes, which means we have m choose h ways to choose our nickels and n choose r minus h ways to choose our dimes. Thus, by the rule of summation, our identity is confirmed. Great, so let's get into our last combinatorial proof. So for this problem, we want to use an argument that involves counting pairs x and a, where x is a subset of the set 1 to n, and x is an element in a to show that the sum as k goes from 0 to n of k times n choose k is equal to n times 2 minus n minus 1. Now just like the last two problems, I'm going to come up with a counting problem and explain how both the left and right hand side are answers to the same counting problem. So let me go ahead and write that out for you now. So we are going to be interpreting this as the number of ways to pick a winning lottery ticket. So let's start by looking at the left hand side. So for our left-hand side, from n tickets, 
we are going to pick k of them to have cash prizes. Then from these k, we're going to choose one of the k to win the grand prize. From this, we know that there are n choose k ways to pick the prize tickets, after which we have k ways to pick the grand prize winner. So if we sum from k equals 1 to n, we'll cover all the lotteries where at least one ticket is sold, so that the total number of ways to pick the winning lottery ticket is our left-hand side. So we have the sum as k goes from 1 to n of k times n choose k ways to pick them. Great, so that's all for our left-hand side, so let's go ahead and get into our right-hand side. Great, so a reminder, our right-hand side is equal to n times 2 to the n minus 1. So for the right-hand side, we're going to begin by picking one ticket of our n tickets purchased to win the grand prize. After we do that, each of the remaining unchosen n minus 1 tickets can be prize winning or not. And we can do this n ways. Then each of the remaining unchosen n minus 1 tickets can be prize winning or not which yields 2 to the n minus 1 possibilities. Thus, we have n times 2 to the n minus 1 ways. And so there we have answered our counting problem, giving the right-hand side of this identity as a solution. And since both the left-hand and right-hand sides are solutions to the same counting problem, they must be equal, and thus we have proved this identity. So that finishes this problem off, and that's a good place to stop.